for our controls expenses via ERP budgets uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Daryl Fubler, uh, partner and head of business development for Emergence. Uh, so once again, thank you for your time today uh, as we we um, we look at Paramount Workplace. Um, Paramount Workplace is a solution that uh, Emergence has been an implement implementation and support, support partner for for a number of years um, and have, in, have it implemented uh, successfully with a number of our clients uh, uh, that we support. Um, with, uh, with us today are uh, George Tontovich and Beth Wabama from Paramount and they're going to be kind enough to, show, uh, to uh, lead, us, lead the presentation for us today as we uh, show you a few uh, the power of the Paramount Workplace solution and how to transform your spend management. We do ask that you ask questions uh, and you put them in the, uh, in the dialog box on, on, on your control panel uh, within the webinar and we'll, we'll answer and address your, your questions at the end of, of the presentation. Um, so with that, I'll pass it over to George and we'll go from there. Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Daryl, and welcome everyone to this webinar on controlling expenses via ERP budgets. Uh, my name is George, and I'm with Paramount Workplace. Along with me is Beth Wabama, also with Paramount. I'm going to run through a few slides on our topic today and then hand the controls over to Beth to show you how Paramount can solve these important issues around spend management. So a bit of a funny slide to start with. Um, I'm sure that most of us have seen this reaction to unexpected spendings in, in our organizations over, over time. Many organizations experience these reactions after the spend has been made, and usually the month after when analyzing their financial statements after the fact. Ineffective requisitioning and contract process can cost organizations significant uh, funds and generate month-end sur surprises. The important thing to note is whether you want proactive controls to manage the spend before it happens versus after the fact when the horse is out, out of the proverbial chute. So the topic today is whether the control of expenses can be achieved through the use of e-procurement systems. Can e-procurement really solve my spend issues in real life? So as we define e-procurement, it's the automation of procurement and supply chain using internet-based applications and technology. Pretty straightforward. And of course, the advantages under it, I think we can all have a quick read through them, probably see some of them that we agree with, some of them maybe more important than others. And certainly, over the short term and long term, a lot of these advantages come into more focus. So to begin uh, to talk about how uh, Paramount Workplace can solve your spend problems, uh, we want to re really concentrate on this, on this theme of being proactive versus reactive. And how does Paramount do that? Well, we do that with the seamless out-of-the-box integration with our, with our ERP system. I expect many of the people on the webinar are uh, Microsoft Dynamics clients, but we also support many other ERP platforms. We're multi-currency and multi-language. Uh, we have annual releases throughout the year, some of them with features. And by the way, our features really come from our users. So as users give us feedback, we improve our product in that way. Um, our solutions can run off browsers and smart devices and phones and, and, and many different browsers and, again, smartphones. We were um, founded in 1995 and been doing spend management solutions since that time. Uh, while we have employees in both, uh, uh, both the U.S. and Canada, we service countries all over the world. Our solutions can run off browsers, as I said before, or from smartphones, or from computers from your home or office. We have flexible licensing methods to accommodate any customer. And lastly, the reason why we're here, we have a full line of spend management tools centered around procurement and expense report solutions. So here are just a, a smattering or just a few of the industries that we 
that we support through Paramount. And here are some of the firms within those industries. I'm a bit of a sports enthusiast myself, so I tend to concentrate on the sports teams. But as you can see, there's many other, many other different firms within industries that we service. Okay, so with that, um, I'm going to hand the controls over to Beth, and Beth is going to begin our webinar on, on, controlling, um, uh, on controlling spend management through, through ERP budgets. And over to you, Beth. Well, thank you everybody who's attending today. We really appreciate you taking time out of your day. Um, as George said, my name is Beth and I'm going to go through entering a requisition uh, for a new hire. After that new hire um, has the requisition entered and it's completely approved, I'll show you how a purchase order is created. And throughout that whole process, we're going to be able to keep controls in place, making sure that we're not overspending, making sure that we're pur pur purchasing the correct items, before the legal document of that purchase order is created. Once that purchase order is created, we then are going to take it to the next step. Well, I'm going to show you how to do receiving and invoice matching from within Paramount Workplace. As I go through the demonstration today, I don't follow any type of script, but please make sure to jot down any questions you may have as we'll be addressing the questions at the end of the demonstration. You can access Workplace using a browser, and today I'm using Chrome. Supported browsers are Firefox, Internet Explorer, as well as um, Microsoft Edge. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as my employee who's going to start the requisition process. So right from my login screen, it's going to take me to the dashboard that I have been, uh, 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 has been configured for me. Each person can have its very own dashboard. So Susan can have a completely different dashboard than Brittany just depending upon who you are and what you do within the organization and what you need to see. So on my dashboard I can see I have my dashboard metrics. On the right hand side I have the different catalogs that I've been given access to. And then I also have outstanding transactions. Now outstanding transactions will show up if at least one line is open on that transaction. And if I need any more information I could click, quickly, click right into, quickly click right into it. Now for example that check request says it's waiting for approval and I can see right away who it's waiting for approval from. So right from my desktop I can always keep up to date on everything that's happening with my outstanding transactions. On the left hand side it gives me the navigation to the module or modules that I've been given access to. Today we're going to start on the requisition side. When I click on that requisition it now takes me into the requisition check request module. It's going to only show me the open transactions for this module. It'll show me the transactions that I can do the maintenance that I've been given access to, as well as the reports. Now remember, depending upon who you are, what you do, you may not even have the ability to do anything underneath maintenance or see any reports. Very easy to configure to let your users have just what they need to get their job done swiftly. So as I look at this and we talked about our open transactions, we also have the ability to look at historical transactions. Underneath find requisitions, this is where I could pull up all the historical information. So I can simply click into a transaction and it will go ahead and pull up that information for me. Or I could put in uh, quite a few different find by or filter criteria. And let's just see, maybe find something by a certain vendor name. I can put in if it contains or it starts with. And we'll just say it's going to start with office. And then I can quickly filter on that. And that would bring up every transaction that has a vendor that starts with the name Office on it. And from here, I could click directly into that transaction and open it up, or I could export it out to Excel, where I could then slice and dice or do more manipulation of that actual data. We can also just go ahead and go into our Find Requisition screen. The Find Requisition screen is showing the screen that's been configured for FOI. Now, there are quite a few more fields that are available, and I just happen to have them hidden. And if still you look on this screen and you feel that there's a field on here that just may not be applicable to your business or to how you, how you want your company to utilize the product, not a problem. Each user can have their very own user-defined template showing fields that are available to them, making fields read-only, such in my scenario, I've made the depart, 
document read only. You can also have fields default in values, such as my site ID and my warehouse, my ship to. And then you can also make fields required, so any field that has an asterisk beside it. Now again, this is your workplace, it's your template for the user, so you choose what fields they see, what fields are required, and what fields would be um, read-only or default. One example I always use is underneath the general tab there is that GL account. A lot of times people that are entering a requisition may not know the GL account at that level. And that's absolutely fine. They surely don't need to code it here. It's not set up as a required field, so it can be filled in throughout the approval process. But if you wanted it as a required field, you could definitely make it required, and then that end user would have to fill it in. Next to some of the fields, you do see that there are magnifying glasses. And those magnifying glasses mean that there's more information behind that field. For example, if I click on that GL account, it's going to bring me up to all the GL accounts that I have been given access to from Microsoft Dynamics GP. And we read and write directly to GP. So if a new account was added there, I'd see it automatically here, as well as with your vendors. Now behind those zooms, you can filter and restrict the information. So if I click on that zoom and I bring up my vendor file, I could filter and restrict it to maybe I only see three vendors. Again, really streamlining what your end users see, helping to keep that control or around what's going on with the actual requisition. I'm going to go ahead and back out and we're going to start by entering some information on the requisition. And we're going to start with what's called our internal catalogs. There are two types of catalogs. There's an internal catalog as well as a punch out catalog. So the internal catalogs, I'm going to go ahead and just click on my AV catalog. Internal catalogs are catalogs that you set up and maintain on your own. Either you've gotten a download from the vendor or you've manually gone in and set up the items. And because these are your, your catalogs, you can have whatever you'd like to have on them. You could set them up with their image, their description, their dollar amount, and then put them into different categories and search through the different categories if you like. If you have more than one internal catalog, you could choose shop all and search for an item across all catalogs. You could use a basic search criteria right at the top. Or if you see what you'd like to add, you can go ahead and just grab that item and add that to cart. Now I see the shopping cart for that item. But I'm going to continue shopping because my requisition today is for a new hire. And all new hires always get some expanding folders. So I'm going to switch right over to my office supply folder. And there I can see my expanding folder, and I'll go ahead and add that to my cart. Once that's in my cart, I can now go ahead and choose to create order requisition. And that brings those two line items onto my requisition entry form. Another way we can add line items is to simply uh, access our punch out vendor. Remember, I said there's two types of catalogs one was an internal catalog, the other is punch out. So if you have access to the shop button, you could come up and you can then see your different catalogs. Well, I know punch out is my a punch out vendor. Office Depot is my punch out vendor, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Now the difference between internal catalogs and punch out catalogs is that the punch out catalog is where the vendor sets up and maintains the catalog for you as their customer. So in other words, you're punching out to their website, so you don't have to do any maintenance. They constantly are keeping this up for you with your pricing and your products. You could go ahead and search through using the technology of their search engine, or just go ahead and type in the item number if you know what it is. And all of my new hires always get two dozen ballpoint stick pens, so I'll add that to my cart as well, and then I'll simply check out. Now when I check out, it does bring that line item onto my requisition entry form. Keep in mind that that does not complete the item with Office Depot, and that item will not be completed until the purchase order is sent electronically to them, at which time they would then go ahead and ship me those ballpoint stick pens. I could also use what's called a shopping list. A shopping list is an everyday template for items that you may request on a regular basis, whether it's a weekly supply list or maybe you've set up different types of templates for different hires, and that's what I have. So I've got a couple different templates that I use for some of my new hires throughout my offices. Today I'm just going to use my computer, because I know I don't need a lot of different things, just some basic computer components. 
So this is a template that I already set up with a lot of the items that I know every time these are the ones I can use or order that we have already decided that this is the best item for us to use for any new hire. All I had to do is put in a quantity and then when I did that I went ahead and populated that line item onto my requisition entry form. I can also import line items via CSV template form. I could duplicate a line item or I could simply come down and just enter something in the body. So if I click on that magnifying glass it's going to bring up all the items from the item master file that I have been given access to and if I want I can definitely search. I'm going to find that 12 foot white phone cord because I do know this employee needs a phone cord as well. And lastly I'm just going to type in something. I'm going to say cleaning services and we'll type in one and we'll say each. Alrighty, so at this time we've got quite a few different lines added quite a few different ways. Each line is independent of itself, meaning if I highlight line one, the information down in that general pat tab is only for line one, and that we can go through and encode each line. So with line one highlighted, I can see it automatically defaulted in with Best Buy as a vendor, the ship to, the site ID, department, those are all taken care of, but no GL account was put in. Again, if I know it, I can add it. If I don't know it, of course, I don't have to because it's not a required field. Or if it's not even on my screen, then someone else throughout the approval process could add. If I go to that expanding folder on line two, I can see the vendor staples and the GL account defaulted in. If I go to line three, I can see there's that Office Depot from Punch-Out, but no GL. And again, because it's not required, I don't have to, but we'll just go ahead and, and sort through and grab that real quick today. Line four, look at that one. The GL defaulted in, but not the vendor. So very flexible as to how the coding is done. And remember, this coding is helping you to keep control um, on what's going on with your actual items. Because depending upon, if you are using Microsoft Dynamics Encumbrance Management module, we have the ability to look at the budget for that. And if I was over budget, it would stop me at any time. That 12 foot white phone cord, I can see the vendor defaulted in as well as that GL account. And then for the cleaning services, I'm not going to enter in any GL or vendor, but I do have information in the form of, a, of an attachment. I'm going to go ahead and click on that paper clip that's right next to that actual line, and it's going to bring me up to my attachment screen where I'm going to have the ability to attach something specifically to that line. So we can have line level attachments. And I'll go ahead and just grab something here real quick. We can have line level attachments or we can also have header attachments. Now as soon as I attach it at the line level, I do see the inline view over on the right hand side. I can see that attachment has now um, been shown as a paper clip around a piece of paper on that line. And if I need an attachment at the header level, it's up here in the upper right hand corner. Now as I look through the line items, I do think I'm going to add a little bit of a comment to line one. So I'm going to highlight line one. I go to my comments tab. And there's two types of comments. The first will print on the purchase order. So I can say um, need right away. And secondly, I could say new hire would like new TV. Now, as soon as I started typing, you can see a sticky note populated next to line one, letting me know that there is a comment associated. Now, I could also do a comment at the header level if I'd like. Just go up here in the upper right hand corner. You also have the ability to duplicate lines down at the bottom. I can mass line change, change everything to a specific GL or a certain vendor. You also have the ability to do GL distribution. So if I had a line that I needed to distribute to more than one GL account, I could definitely do that as well. If you're using Microsoft Dynamics GP in, in, in analytical accounting, we have integration to that as well down here at the bottom. The last thing I'm going to do is just name the requisition and I'll say new hire for South Memphis office. And my next step from here is to go ahead and choose to submit it for approval. And to do that, I just come up in the upper right hand corner and click on submit. Now if anything was over budget, it would stop me. I would highlight that line and not let me move forward. Um, but as of today, everything is within budget, so we are okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes, that I want it to kick off for approval. Now we have unlimited levels of approval and unlimited approval paths, meaning that absolutely everything on this requisition will be fully approved 
before the purchase order is created. So I could route it for approval based on the independent line items. So in other words, all that information that we filled in underneath the general tab, remember it was different a lot of the times for each line. So I could route it for approval based on that information underneath that general tab. I could route it for approval based on the vendor, the GL, the ship to, the site ID, the department. I could route it for approval based on the item number, the dollar amount. We could route it for approval based on position, where Susie enters in the requisition, and from Susie it goes to Cole, and from Cole it goes to Phoebe, and so forth and so on throughout the hierarchy of the company. Usually there's a dollar amount threshold that's associated at the same time. But any of these things that I've spoken of can be combined. So you could have a dollar amount threshold um, combined with uh, routing for a vendor. You could have position-based approval at the same time as if you route for GL. So it can be very robust. But we can also have it very simplistic if you just need it to go from one person to the next person to the next person and then approve it. Absolutely no problem. You can also have lines auto-approve. So very robust or very simplistic. We can meet whatever requirements that you have in regards to routing and approval. Before I log out as FOI is underneath my encumbrance, excuse me, underneath my details tab is information in regards to this actual transaction. So I can see that it's going to Lisa next because she's in bold. Now if Lisa was going to be out of the office and had engaged her alternates, I'd be able to see who they are underneath this assigned alternate approver heading. In the middle, there's uh, our integration to Microsoft Dynamics GP encumbrance management module where if I did, had gone over the budget, I would have been able to see that here as well as if it would have stopped me on that main page. Down at the bottom, we also have a, a log, audit log that's going to date and timestamp everything that happens to this transaction. Okay, so the next thing that happens, you know, as I mentioned, we had gone through and started the requisition, routed it for approval underneath the actual employee. The next thing that happens is you have your routing kicked off. So in the background, my routing was kicked off. And when it kicked off, it went to the routers or the people that I had set up within my routing and actual flow. And how you set that up is, just to give a little heads up, is we help you with that as well as the team at, at Emergence. We make sure to help out, you out in every way possible for our um, workflow and how that is taking place. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and log in as the approver. Um, we, I'm going to show you also an email that the approver sees. For some reason, I'm having a little bit of a hard time with my Outlook connecting this morning. So once that does pop up, I will also show you how you can approve via email. So I'm going to log in next as my user by the name of Lisa. When I log in as Lisa, this is what she sees on her dashboard. So as you can see, her dashboard is a little bit different than what we had seen previously with FOI. One of the main differences is she has a to-do list. Remember, FOI didn't have anything like that. Because she's an approver is the reasoning why she's going to have a to-do list. So she has the ability to either approve right here within Workplace, or she could have approved in her email. And now I'm going to be able to actually pop up and show you what that email looks like. And so this is an example of what that email looks like. And it's very easy. Once you receive the email, you can either click on this hyperlink, and it'll take you directly into Workplace, where you can choose to approve or disapprove the entire requisition or the independent line items. Or you could simply click on Reply. And this would now allow you to do the uh, approval or disapproval from within the email. At the header level, I could go ahead and type a Y, and that would approve everything on that requisition. All I have to do is hit send. If I want to disapprove everything on the requisition, all I have to do is type an N, but I want to have comments as to why it's been disapproved. And then all I have to do is hit send. Same is true for the independent lines. If I want to approve one line, I can just come down into each line, say, yes, I want to approve this, and yes, I'm fine with this. But you know what, those ballpoint stick pens, nope, we've got so many in the cabinet. I'm just going to go ahead and, and disapprove and say maybe find something different. And then go ahead and submit for approval. And then I wouldn't even have to go into the application. But email approval is just one way. Um, we had started going into the actual application, and that's where we're going to go next. So say Lisa didn't even look at her emails. So when she comes in, she can do 
the approval or disapproval right from within Workplace. So as soon as she logs in, she can click on that to-do list, which is going to take her to a load screen where she can get very detailed as to what she wants to see. She can pull by requisitioner, priority, as well as department, or she can just click on load and that would pull up everything that's in her queue. From here, she can go ahead and expand that actual uh, requisition. From here, we can see quite a few different line items on that requisition and have the ability to either go in and edit or change the information or maybe just approve or disapprove. So if you want to approve or disapprove at the header level, come in the upper right hand corner, you can approve or disapprove, that would be for the entire requisition. Or you can go into each line item and that's what I'm going to do today. So as I look at each line, I'm like, well, I wonder how it was coded. You can definitely see that underneath the general tab. You can see how each line was coded. I could scroll through the general tab. Now we're on that top tab, expanding pocket expanding folder. And I can keep scrolling through here or if I wanted to and go back out to my lines, click on it, see exactly what it is, and then go to the general tab. You know, completely up to you. Line six, now I can see there's that inline view of that um, actual attachment, and he didn't choose a vendor, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a vendor. And we always use Ajax Cleaning, and I always know what vendor account we always use too, so I'll just grab that as well. Now again, they're not uh, required at this level because as as a system administrator he didn't choose for them to be required to be filled in by the admin but you surely can you know our main fo fo main focus is to make it so easy for the end users to enter in the information just only what they need but then you're you're counting people to have the controls in place to say yes no or this is how it's going to get coded to because we know that that's the right account instead of having slip ups going to the wrong account you know really keeping that control in place from here, I am now going to go ahead and make the determination as to what I'm going to approve or disapprove. Well, I see there's a comment on line one, so I'm going to go ahead and just click on that sticky note. It takes me to the comment. It says that they need it right away and that the new hire would like a TV. Well, golly, I'd like a new TV, but I don't think it's going to be something that a new hire gets, so I'm going to go ahead and just disapprove that line. To do that, I'm just going to click on that little red radio button, but to disapprove it, I need to have a note back to that requester letting them know why and I'll just say find cheaper and then from here the rest of the line items I'm gonna go ahead and approve by clicking on the green radio button from here I can go ahead and just choose process now what happens when I choose process the line that was disapproved will move backwards in the approval process going back to FOI so lines that were approved will move forward in the approval process one last thing before I log out as this user is underneath the user preferences this is where I can see the alternate approvers. This is where if I'm going to be out of the office this afternoon because I'm feeling ill, I could just come in, slide this over, and then during that time, my alternate would approve on my behalf. Now this is not where I set up who my alternate is. That's done by your system admin. It's just how you turn it on. But even better, if I know I'm going to be on holiday, I can go ahead and just put in my dates for my holiday. And then when those dates come due, my alternate would automatically turn on, and I don't even have to log into the solution to do that. All right, so we've taken a look at the employee as well as the approver, and now we're going to take that final step and go in as the last person in my scenario. His name is Ben. Ben is my purchasing agent, my buyer. Um, anybody who you want to look at that requisition and review it before a purchase order is created. Go ahead and just click on Ben, and this is the dashboard that he sees. Again, a little bit different. Everybody can have their own different dashboard. One main thing again is he has a to do pending requisitions. We also have the ability to send requisitions out to RFQ. And if that is ever of any interest to any of you on the line, please reach out to Emergence and we'll set up a separate demo. Today we're just going to do our regular pending requisitions. And this will bring up our load screen where I could get detailed as to what I want to see. Or I could just click on load and it'll pull up everything in my queue. And there's our new hire for the South Memphis office. So at this time, as a, a reviewer, I again can go underneath that general tab. But if you see now, the general tab has changed. Fields aren't made read-only. Fields aren't defaulting in values. Uh, there are quite a few more fields that are added. These fields were there the whole time. I just happen to have them hidden. Again, just really showing you how flexible it is for no matter who you are and what you do within the organization. So I could go through each line, verifying the information that was there. If I needed to change something, I surely can. You can see the inline view of that attachment as well. 
And then after I've gone through every line, I can make the decision, well, do I want to order them or do I want to uh, cancel them and send them back or put them on hold? Well, for today, I'm going to go ahead and just choose to order all, and I did that right at the header level. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on Process. The next step that happens is Workplace is going to verify that all the information is correct on the requisition before a purchase order is created. And if it's not, it'll definitely flag me, like if it's missing a shipping code, uh, if it's missing a location, maybe it might be missing a vendor, maybe a GL, because it's not going to let that information happen to, to be able to create a purchase order. And once everything is correct, it's going to go ahead and generate those purchase orders, and they will be available to me here within Workplace. Now, they would also be available to you uh, over in GP as well with our REC to PO solution. You do have the ability to not only have the POs here, but also over in GP. PO number 3600, that is my CXML. So in other words, that's my punch out vendor. So that vendor has now received that uh, PO electronically, and they would ship me those ballpoint stick pens. This is an example of what the POs would look like here within Workplace. Because you can have full procurement within Workplace. In other words, you can have the entire uh, pr purchase or pr procurement solution take place here, where it's requisition to purchase order, and the purchase order stays here, and then receive invoice match. Or you can have the rec to PO, where the PO is available over in GP, and then we still can do receive invoice match. Completely up to you. Our next way to roll is to go into our receive invoice match, and I'm going to log in as Phil. When I log in as Phil, he is the person that's going to be able to do the receive invoice match. So I'm going to go to the module called receive match invoice, and there's two different ways we can do the receiving. One is through a receiving wizard, where I could pull all the different POs just by my, from, from me that I've ever done, or maybe I want to pull just all the open purchase orders out there. So I'm going to leave my load screen blank, and then it'll bring up all the open purchase orders, where I can go ahead and just say, yep, I'm going to uh, mark that because I'm going to receive this expanding folder. I can type in any comments that I'd like. I can see the number that I'm going to receive is defaulting in as one. I can add an attachment if I'd like as well at the header level, maybe a packing slip. Or if everything is correct, I can just go ahead and click in process. And now it'll kick off for approval. Again, unlimited levels of approval, unlimited approval paths. In my scenario today, I don't have it set up for any approval, but I can see that it created that information over in Microsoft Dynamics GP. So I can see there's the batch that it created, there's the receipt number that it was created. Now I can take it a step further and we can go into our receive match invoice transaction entry screen. From here, I can choose to not only do a shipment or a receiving, I can also do a, a invoice and a receiving at the same time, or maybe now match that invoice to a receiving. So we could do everything all at once, an invoice and a shipment. I could choose to pull by vendor, maybe we're going to pull everything by Ajax Cleaning, and then I could choose load all those POs, and then it's going to bring up all the open POs for Ajax Cleaning, and I can grab the one that I want to receive, an invoice match against, I don't have to type anything in because all that information is coming right off the PO, it's already populated. All I have to do is verify the quantity shipped, if the quantity invoiced. I then can attach at the header level a packing slip or an um, invoice. I definitely want to put in the invoice number. And then from here, if there's any additional coding I need to do, I definitely could do that. If there, um, this screen doesn't have the ability, I, I don't I have it hidden, I should say, for if there was any freight or discounts, but that is available here as well. Once you've got all that information put in, I can go ahead and just click on Process. And when I do so, it's going to route for approval again. And then once it's fully approved, it's going to come back and give me the information um, on that actual transaction. So from here, what we've done is we've gone ahead and completed the receive to invoice match. Um, we could move forward and go into our check request. And but before I do, I definitely want to go ahead and just show the transaction here over in GP. So let me get that up here. Should take me like two seconds. And we'll show that. Okay, so this receipt number is 1801. Let's just find that. It's probably the last one there. There it is. 1801. There's an invoice number for those cleaning services. So we can see where that transaction just came right in to Microsoft Dynamics GP into your receiving transaction entry screen. 
The last thing I'm going to show you today is what's called check request. And as I log in as FOI, this is the dashboard that he sees. We're going to go into check request and I'm going to go into check request entry. So in our mind, check request is for an invoice that does not have a purchase order associated to it, but you want to be able to route it for approval. So if I come in and I come up to my select invoices button, I can go ahead and grab an invoice and choose to assign it. And when I do so, I now can see the inline view of that actual uh, invoice on the right hand side. I can type it in. I'll say it's legal fees. I can grab the vendor Stetson and Morrow. If I had Stetson and Morrow, but we're just going to use advanced office today. I can automatically see that invoice number is 105, enter that in. And then if I want to enter each individual line separately, I surely can. So I could have an A line, you know, or whatever the comments is, you know, for one uh, the dollar amount. And then I could have line B, B, whatever, let's see, and then that's the quantity, and that was for 225. And the reason I'm showing you it that way is because you can actually route each line independently for approval. So maybe this still is just one invoice, but you may need to break up the lines for independent approval. You absolutely can. Um, each line is independent of itself in the check request, just like the requisition. So each line will have its own general tab that you could route for approval. Or maybe you just really only want to have one full line on here and be able to enter that information in and have that entire invoice paid. Not a problem, we can do that too. We would just write legal fees. And then for the whole amount, what was the whole amount here? 1125. And then now from here, I would just submit and route it for approval, just like with the end of the requisition solution. And once it's fully approved, it'll automatically show up in your accounts payable over in Microsoft Dynamics GP. Well, at this point, I've gone through everything that's been on my agenda. Um, I am going to now open it up for questions. All right, so there's one question just asking what, uh, from a mobility perspective was just uh, what, um, what uh, from mobility, just what, uh, what mobile options were available, reiterating. Beth, were you able to hear me? Sure, I'm sorry. I had a, uh, George had said he was going to uh, 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 right. ask them some of the questions, so I was just waiting for him to ask that. Problem. Yep. So, for a mobility standpoint, yeah. so for a mobility standpoint, yes, we have um, a new mobile that's coming out to be able to enter in information on our mobile, as well as if you're looking just more for deployment, um, deployment of the product can be in a, the cloud, um, it could be in a hosted environment or on premise. There's a question here just asking roughly um, how long do implementations take? And depending upon that's the couple. Always, that's, that's always a depends answer, I know. Sure, sure. Yeah, and that's exactly how I was going to start it out. Depending upon um, how many users, what modules that are chosen, we always say from the date of payment till um, go live is anywhere between three to five months. Um, again, we this is what we do for a living, right? So we're we're always able and, and ready to, to work. But we know you as customers, you have your day to day day to day life of and your business. So just being able to carve out time to make sure that we each each can meet together at the same time, you know, that's just one thing. And then uh, just making sure that we have everything configured to what you're looking for for your business process. So again, an estimate would be between three to five months. I think that's I'm just waiting to see if there's any other questions that will come through. Okay. All right. Well, with that being said, I want to I want to say thank you very much, everybody, for your time and and for attending today. We hope that you uh, saw the power of a Paramount Workplace and, and, and what it can bring to your organization. I want to thank George and, and Beth for their time today and leading us through the presentation. So um, if you have any questions, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to, to us at Emergence. Um, we'd be happy to uh, have a follow-on conversation 
uh, address any follow-on questions that you may have. All right. Once again, thank you again for your time. Um, my contact details are on the on the screen, um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any any questions. Uh, thank you again, Beth and George, and thank you everyone for your time today.